What happened in 1962 at Ole Miss was a war between the state of Mississippi and the United States of America. I, I remember being outside playing and coming inside and my parents' eyes were glued to the television. Uh, and I remember saying, what are you all watching? Shh, shh, University of Mississippi is being integrated. And I, I, I looked at the television set and, and all I can remember was seeing some real mean, foul looking faces, very unwelcoming faces and just sort of saying to myself, uh, I would never go to a place like that. America fought a little war on the night of September 30th, 1962, into the morning of October 1st, 1962. A small battle occurred in Oxford, Mississippi, on the campus of the university and in the city. But those were some very tough and difficult times where people uh, died. Uh, Getting James Meredith in here and registering in October of 1962 was not an easy thing. Uh, it was uh, such a tough thing, it rose to the level where it was on the president's desk, where the President of the United States is having to be involved, and uh, the Attorney General Bobby Kennedy uh, having to send out federal marshals, uh, 25 or 26 or so, to protect a man's life simply because he wanted to register for classes. I was at war, and I knew I could win the war against Mississippi by only one means, and that was to get the federal government in position where they had to use their force to support my rights. I think James Meredith was uh, incredibly strategic, incredibly bright, and uh, I don't know what sort of support system or guidance that he had uh, to determine that the best way to beat the system was by using the system. Uh, we often thought, how on earth did he uh, study under those circumstances? Because uh, uh, we had fairly difficult circumstances to study under, we thought ourselves. And so we would always wonder, how on earth did he, uh, did he do it? And so in that sense, he kind of became our, and remained uh, our hero. Jane Meredith came to Ole Miss, you know, and he had a very, very different experience that I had, you know, they had to, uh, they had to, uh, I mean, people shooting at him and, you know, other experiences that he had that I didn't have as a football player, you know. When I came along, I was a football player, I was protected as long as I played, as long as I knocked people's head off, it wasn't no problem with it. James Meredith could have chosen a historically black college or university to attend and, and easily have gone there and, and been fine. Uh, but he chose to uh, knock down the walls of segregation and uh, I look forward to continuing to pay tribute to him. He's a living uh, uh, a monument to that movement and uh, I'm glad that uh, he had the courage to stand up then and allow us to, to have the opportunities today that we have. You cannot um, have a second or a third or a 10,000 unless you have a first. There has to be a first. So there would not have been a Deuce McAllister or a Michael Orr if there was not um, a James Reed and a Ben Williams. There would have not have been an Ormenti Price unless there was a Peggy Gillum. Uh, there would not have been an uh, Otis Sanford, a Ronnie Agnew, um, a George Hillard, an Edie Keller Green, a McKeever a Morgan, unless there had been a James Meredith. And we all recognize that the opportunities that were afforded us, the opportunities to get a great education, to be a part of a wonderful alumni network, were all made possible by James Meredith. And the integration of this university was one of the pivotal events that made this place go from a, uh, go from a place to a university. If you want to think of Americans who have done great and glorious things for our nation, look to Oxford, Mississippi. Look to the University of Mississippi. Look at James Meredith. Look at the federal marshals. Look at the Mississippi National Guardsmen who rescued the city that night and the 
city and the University of Mississippi and look at the regular black troops and white troops who followed them in, marching through a wall of flame in one case, and you'll find gallantry and you'll be inspired, I think, as an American. And if we understand what happened here that night, we're going to have a much better sense of what it means really to be an American when the stakes are so high, the risks are so great, the danger is so real, and the transformation is so um, inspiring. Such insignificant events that led to somebody today simply walking into a classroom and sitting down with people of different ethnicities that was not so simple then, and so the way we pay tribute to their legacy is by paying it forward. James Meredith's legacy to me extends uh, much further than just the realms of Ole Miss and Oxford and the state of Mississippi. I, I think his contributions in terms of opening the doors for black students and, and all students of color to attend a public university in the state of Mississippi uh, have far-reaching implications in terms of where we stand today and the American public's ability to look beyond a person's skin tone and to look at them for their true merits, and skills and abilities and to be able to make judgments about what their potential is. Uh, one of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten, I remember our first meeting, uh, he said, uh, you know, I chose Ole Miss, but Ole Miss chose you. Uh, and that really meant a lot to me, coming from someone who uh, who had such courage and uh, sacrificed uh, his life uh, to uh, pave the way for others. When I was elected president of the Ole Miss Alumni Association, um, it was an important moment for me and uh, probably uh, one of the greatest honors of my um, life. Um, but one thing that made it even sweeter was to open my mail one day. <laughs> and um, there was a letter from James Meredith who said, I have been watching you. Your moment has come. I am proud of you. I have kept clips and pictures and stories about you. Be a great president. This was a great turning point in American history, in the history of the Civil Rights Movement. He made it possible that he was first, and we could honor that legacy by being the best students that we could be and being the best community servants that we could be. We are who we are because of those people who came before us and uh, paved a better way.